Hello internet, welcome back. Today I'm taking a break from making. I'm gonna unmake something. I have here a mini um, camera photo printer thing. I got it from the charity shop. I'm gonna pull it apart, see what parts it's got inside it. See what I can salvage from it, see what I can use for other projects. So without further ado, this is Azel's TV. Let's unmake something. Now, this is the device in question. It cost a very respectable three pounds. Three great British pounds, and that's this much. I'll put a little thing here. Canadian dollars and American dollars and all the rest of that jazz. I've got tools aplenty. I have spudgers, I have a pick, I have screwdrivers and prying devices and pliers and all sorts. So let's get into her. Right, it's a Easy Share Photo Printer 300 by Kodak. Whatever that means. I've seen these many times. I've never actually seen one up close. This came with the power brick as well. And that works. It's all been tested and everything else, so that's brilliant. I'm going to save this for another project. It puts out 24 volts at 2 amps. So, a bit beefy, so I could use that for something, I don't know, another printer project or to run motors or anything else. Now, I thought if this contains at least one stepping motor, it's already paid for itself because three pounds, it's fantastic. I'm sure it'll have that and other things as well. Yeah, it'll have LEDs, there's switches in here. It'll have all sorts of rollers and steel beams and stuff that I can use and things and I've used parts from a VCR in like the back door catch project and the front door catch project and all sorts of things really the foot pedal used bits from that the USB power bank used parts from a VCR so oh it's got a threaded insert for a tripod so I could use that for a project as well because I'm always making camera stuff except for today where I'm taking apart a camera ish thing now I think it looks like this is in two parts. It's got a top and a bottom clamshell device uh, design. So let's take these off. First of all, let's save the screws because even the screws I can use in things. I've used screws from. What did I take apart from the screws for the foot pedal and the USB power bank? Was that the VCR or was that a hard drive? I think it was a hard drive. If you've got a filament extruder, you can probably grind up the case and use it because it's probably ABS. It's all recyclable, you know, it's all. You can use it again and again. Ah, use it again and again. Ooh. That's nice, okay. So we've got the main board, I'm guessing. I don't think there's going to be another a bigger board in there. Ooh. Okay, so the cartridge thing goes in the front here for the paper. I'm guessing. And well, there's a thing here with a Okay. So presumably this is empty or, or what? Is that like a laminating film? Does it get printed on and oh god. And then it's coated in that. Look at the, this plastic, the design in it where it's all where the plastic has flowed into the mould. That's fascinating, look at that. This shimmering effect. Very strange. Well let's put that back in there for now. Let it go. No. No, I was right the first time. Okay, so we've got tape. You see this in a lot of stuff like this in a lot of consumer electronics, this sort of fibre reinforced tape for holding down wires. I'm gonna put you there for now. 
some blue tape for you. Let's start pulling more stuff apart. Will this fit in here? Just about. Actually, no, it doesn't. Um, I came prepared. Mm. I came prepared with flat tips. I want the cross points. Idiot, idiot, idiot. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I lied before about being prepared. I'm prepared now, hopefully. I had flathead screwdrivers before. I wanted cross points. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, me either. Now, let's try and get into her. Is this the size I need? I'm gonna say yeah. Oh, good lord. More power. I need to get a set that's got a prior bar hold or something. That was easy. Okay. This looks like. I'm going to guess a fan. Oh, oh god. Oh, oh. Oh. Is there more than. Oh, jeez. Okay, hang on. Oh, good grief. I think I'm going to have to take this whole thing out. Um. Right, let's flip flip her bottom side top ones. Let's put you over there all. With your other screw friends. Oh, you can all hang out and have a little discussion about what's going on. In a minute you're gonna be joined by three more screw friends. You can have a little party. Oh these are set screws. Machine screws, not set screws. They don't have a plastic cutting thread like these two they've got a very fine thread which engages like this with a metal insert or with a metal chassis that's probably the metal chassis of the oh yeah look at that the metal chassis of the printer itself this is a captive screw no it's just stuck in there there we go that's a case See, all of that you can recycle. It's probably HDP or ABS. I can't see any. There's markings in it, but I don't know what they mean. <laughs> oh, now it says ABS. I don't know if you can see down in there. Yeah. Almost. The light in here isn't great. I need to get some studio lights to shine down on my work surface. Anyway, let's put you to one side carefully. Mm. What have we got here? Oh, this, oh wow. Here's the motherboard, logic board, whatever you want to call it. Let's unplug here. Let's see if we can see what any of these numbers mean on these chips. Oh, good lord, no, that's, that's like an FPG, look, a BGA chip. So they have lots and lots and lots of balls of solder underneath this chip. And it's laid on top of all of that, on top of the board, and it's heated up and it's it bonds it to the board that way. Wow, there's even more. This looks like a RAM chip. Samson. An in-house made part. I doubt you'll find any information on the internet about that. This part here. That's another Samsung part. So it's probably a ROM chip and a RAM chip. And the main processor itself. Lots of big capacitors in this. Elna brand. I think they're quite a good brand, Elna. Yeah, I'll have to have a look online and um, see if they're a good brand or not. We've got more, perhaps buffer chips for the outputs, because you've got a little thing here, which is 
this output here, what does that connect to? Oh, this connects to this ribbon cable, which connects to the, what I'm guessing is the print head. I don't know, is the paper some special paper that contains the ink already? And this does something thermally? Is it a thermal sort of thermal printer? Hmm. More tape. Tremendous. This ferrite bead that goes over this cable and that helps to cut down any high frequency noise. Anything like if you have a cell phone next to it and it rings and it sends a signal out, it will it will stop that because it's it creates its own magnetic field, which opposes the magnetic field going through the wires. So it it will help to cancel out any noise. It's a sort of it's a bit of RF voodoo. Let's put you down first. Like a little roller assembly, probably Teflon or UHMW. It's hollow. It's almost hollow. Yeah, could be useful for something. I'll leave you in there for now. Let's get this out. Oh, oh, beautiful. Look at this. Okay, we got two stepping motors. This one here, which turns, where's my pick? It turns this cog, or this cog wheel, I should say, more correct. What is this doing? Okay, that's. Can't see that at all because it's all white plastic on white plastic and it's barely moving because I'm turning it such a tiny amount at a time. It looks like it's turning something inside this. I don't know if that's a back and forth for the printer head itself. This one, bigger one, it's bigger, I'm guessing that's a higher torque one. So I'm guessing that's pulling the paper through the mechanism because this is, it's got a tiny gear in there. I can barely see that. Mm. I'm trying to look on my screen because I'm doing all this with a webcam and everything's the wrong way around. It's not mirror image, so as I move this way, my thing's going this way on a screen. So it's it's still difficult to try with frame shots, but um, it's a lot easier than trying to use a DSLR. And then finding half my shot is like out here and you can't see anything. So I've got quite a hefty drive train. I'm guessing nylon gears. Feels that's slippery plastic, so I'm guessing nylon. That goes all through here. We've got a anti-reverse thing to stop from back feeding of the paper. Lots of intricate gears here for doing different things. You'll typically find in like um, inkjet printers and stuff for the page feed, you'll have one motor that's pulling the paper through and it's making sure the next bit of paper is in line and everything else and it does, it takes care of like, the, the cleaning of the print heads and all the rest of it. And only one other motor for actually, move, actually making the ink cartridge move back and forth. So it's a very efficient way, a very cost effective way of making a printer because you have just two motors and it does everything you need. Right, let's move some, let's clear some room, shall we? That's a bit better. Right, let's get down into a. Actually, this, this looks like ah, it looks like the drive train comes off as one unit. I'm not really sure. I could be wrong. Let's have a go. We've got a screw over here. Got one that's in a good and tight. Uh, idea for these stepping motors for a future project that will be fun if they have enough torque and everything else for what I want otherwise I'll have to use 
uh, was it racing servos or something, which will also work, but it's not as elegant. I prefer stepping motors. I'll have to add some feedback to stepping motors because unlike servos, they don't have any feedback. Stepping motors, you have to add your own little thing, an optical encoder or end stops or something, some sort of homing positional sensor. These screws are in there, I'm guessing. Are they Loctited? They don't appear to be. Well, actually, there is something in the threads. I can just about see it, some sort of blue stuff. So these would have been put in and have Loctite or some other chemical put on them to stop, or some thread locking compound, I should say, to stop the screws vibrating loose. Because I don't really want your printer falling apart as you're using it just from vibration. That would not do. Oh my, okay. Oh, I. Mm. Hang on, let's see if I can unthread this from here. Yes. Oh, that's the cartridge feed mechanism for the paper. Yeah, so that's what that one way clutch is. This spring, as you turn this, it's like a Chinese, one of those Chinese fingers finger traps if it, it tightens up on your finger and you can't pull it off anymore but it will loosen up if you push it it's kind of like that this spring if you turn this cog one way it will tighten up it will tighten up this spring as it wraps around this cog the hub but the cog will go the other way yeah this is better for you so it will undo it that way not at work but if I wrap it round that way it tightens up yeah it's getting tight so it's like a one way cogwheel ooh oh it's like a little roller assembly and everything else holding it together um hmm I'm just going to start removing screws randomly in some sort of logical order because I, I don't want to take apart everything at once I want to try and do it in stages so there's a screw see a screw remove a screw here's more screws these screws are even smaller I mean look these are tiny that's almost like watch size you know it's like jewelers braid screws hence the need for a good precision screwdriver set now these precision screwdrivers I bought these from Tandy back when it was a Tandy I was probably 10 11 years old so a good 25 years ago I still have all the screwdrivers and they all still work and I've not broken any of them the only thing I've broken is the case. I cracked the case. And I've broken the other case, the end of it there. And that's the only damage in 25 years of fairly regular use. This is the first time I've recorded a teardown. But it's not the first teardown I've ever done, by any means. I've dropped apart by my feet. Oh dear, here we go. More ABS. I'm actually going to keep it ABS. Just in case I can ever do something with it. You never know. It'll be fun trying to see if I can melt it in the oven. <laughs> now that's a project video and a half, just trying to melt plastic in an oven. And hoping it doesn't catch fire, because that would be exciting. Oh dear. This has got some sort of catch thing holding it all together. Mm, oh, ah, okay. That's the feed roller. It's like a rubberized roller. I'm guessing it has gaps in the roller for more tread. I don't know. Sort of like a car tyre. 
possibly if the ink is still damp, it will roll over it. I don't, I don't know. But no, it goes. The lamination goes over the ink, so it it wouldn't contact any ink. I don't know why it's got things in it. That's, that's, that's interesting. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me why this has gaps in it, if it's not, if it's not going to contact any liquid. I don't know. Anyway, onwards. Let's put you over there. Let's make some more room. Here we go. I'm just chucking the bigger bits on the floor at the moment. It's not too bad. I can pick it up later on. Ah, uh, we got. Oh, is that another screw buried in there? Yeah, there we go. Mm. Ooh, that feels like it's chewed up. That's strange. Mm. I don't really want to force stuff. Oh, ah. Something moved. Oh, hello. Right, this is held on now by this C clip. Lucky I came prepared, as previously stated. Uh, see if I can pull this out of here. These aren't the best. You need all those pliers. Certainly not the worst, but mm, I can't really grip this. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. Now that will go in a over a rod. If it's got a little gap in the rod, a, a, a groove cut into it, that will clip into that, and it acts like a washer, which locks a rod in place. So now, if I'm in, if I'm lucky at all. I should have to ease this out of here. There we go. Look at that. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Well, here's the two stepping motors. Here's this one. Definitely a stepping motor because I can feel the detents as I'm turning it. And there's a smaller stepping motor there. That's quite granular that one, it's one, two, th three, four, five, six, seven, eight, check, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve step for revolution. That'd be handy for a clock. Is it like an hour handle or something? Actually both of these would be handy for a clock. <gasps> that gives me an idea. Let's get these out of here because I don't think anything is gonna move until I get these out. And let's use completely the wrong screwdriver, which just happens to work. Talk about lucky. Flat head and a cross point screw. Ugh. It's the smaller screws that are in there tightest. That's be interesting. Okay, let's. Now you want to... Ah, another screw hidden behind the little cable bit. And there as well is one, okay. Mm. Oh boy. You will come out. Unless you don't. Oh, you might be pressing, yeah, look. This step motor has a little brass collar which is pushed into the metal. It's a twit fit friction fit into the material. Well I'm gonna have to leave that for now. I'll probably leave I'll probably leave these two as one assembly anyway because I can use this cog on this motor. I don't know, but that one I want separate. Because how likely is it I'm going to use a project? I'm going to make a project that's got these two motors in this configuration. It's pretty unlikely. Let's take more stuff apart to get this off. Uh, oh boy, okay. We're getting right down in there. Now this one's interesting. Oh, yeah. 
pliers, not pliers, tweezers. Idiot. Oh, good lord. And I broke a wire off. That's fun. There's a series of plastic clips which are engaging with the wires to hold it all nice and neat in place. Oh, oh good god, okay. I'm just breaking stuff now. Oh. Oh wow. This is a little... Oh, it's an infrared emitter and detector. So one of these will give out infrared light. I don't know how we're going to see this on the camera. About there, maybe? One will give out infrared light. The other one will detect infrared light and give out a signal through these wires. So if you put something in the way of it, something reflective, it says, yes, there's something in the way. So possibly a paper detector. Or if it's out of paper, it might cover that and say, yeah, I'm out of paper now. You're going to have to change the cartridge or something. That's interesting. And this one, which I've broken a number of leads off. Well, actually, one lead. It's two switches. So I'm guessing if you put a cartridge in and it pushed those switches down, you could tell what type of paper cartridge it was depending on what switches are pressed. So if no switches are pressed, it's no cartridge inserted. If you press one, it's like photo quality. If it pressed another one, it's like, I don't know, postcard format or something. No idea. Very interesting there. Got a mixture of mechanical switches and optical. You think they'd go for all one or the other, but I imagine there's a reason they swapped it around like that. Oh. This is sprung. That's odd. And there's another optical switch. Let's see if I can thread all over this. I can see in hell. Uh, where are we? Down in there. Uh, just about. There's another emitter and detector. Oh, look at that. Now that I can use. Look at this. It's a nice, wide, engineered steel bar. Very, very smooth. Even the bearings are nice. It might be worth keeping this as this assembly. I mean, it's like... That's nice. Sprung loaded, actually quite heavily sprung loaded. Look at the size of the springs on there. It's quite. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's have another clear up. Well, that was exciting. I had a good clear up. I paused for a minute to watch a video my brother sent me on exploding Galaxy Note 7 batteries. Incredible. There's some great footage on YouTube. But anyway, we are talking about this printer. That's probably a better way of removing that. Got a little spring of a thing I can use for something. A little. Let's get a bit better hold of you, shall we? There we go, like this. So a little spring like that. That's the sort of thing I could use for, like the the front door door catch, because it'll open and close the flap. So mouse trap, you know, that kind of lever action. So we'll save that. We've got two more of those. Now we're getting down into her because we've got. Oh, this is a single piece of metal that's stamped out and then bent in shape. There's detail in that as well. We've got these lines here that add strength to this metal. Make it very, very rigid. Because the idea is you can bend metal like one way like this, but you can't bend it the other way up. So if you put these lines in, you simulate a sort of girder effect, if you like. Makes it very, very strong. 
Right, how are we going to get this apart? Mm, let's try. Let's try just doing this. Oh, that works. Okay. So hang on. in there to mm. oh lord is it oh ah I've seen this before hang on I've got to unclip this little bit in here as soon as there's a little bit going across that unclips oh come on and then lifts up and round there we go that should unlock this now. Yep. So we've got that little keyway in there. And you can see you've got the round bit the axle sits in. And this narrow entrance here. And in this, we've got the same round bit and we've got cutouts in the side of it. So we've got a hole that's like this. And the axle goes in like that, and it turns around, and it locks it in place, it can't come out. So by unlocking it, and rotating it around, you've unlocked the axle, it's like this sort of shape now, and it slides out. So it's very easy to mould a locking mechanism directly into the plastic lock itself, to hold it in place. No extra fasteners needed. So again, that cuts down on the cost. Which is exactly what you want in an electronic consumer product. Oh wow, okay. It is, by the looks of it, a thermal printer. I'm going to put you to one side and come back to you. I don't know how it's going to show up on camera. Let's take this off of manual focus just briefly. Mm, about there, but you've got. Lots and lots and lots of rows. Let me see if I can insert a video somewhere and um, show a close up. But that green bit there, actually there's a black bit right of, right next to the green bit, that black bit right there, that's a strip of like pixels that you can turn on and off with heat. I think, I think this is what this is. I think it's a thermal printer. There's like a plastic layer over it. So that will transfer the heat and stop anything from sticking. Just pull you off. Mm. I'll see if I can rig up a sort of microscopy kind of thing to get any, a close up shot of that. I can just about see it, good grief. I don't know, is it light? That is so unusual. I'll have to have a closer look at that sooner or later. We'll put it to one side for now. Actually, I'm going to get it out of the mechanism. More screw friends. Um. Because mm. of course this is what applies the pressure. So this has got to go over the rollers which are feeding the paper through. So you've got this sort of U shape like that. So the roller goes for the middle like that. Let's hold it this way. Roller goes up there. Mm. If I can frame the shot, there we go. Feed the paper through, and this is what prints the image onto the paper. I think this is, ah, here we go. I think this is one of those ones where the ink is in the paper and the thermal properties of this part here draw the ink through the paper or make something happen to make the ink show in various places. 
I just get there's more coming off here, look, here we go. Now this looks like a separate unit that comes off of this bracket. And this bracket is very stiff. Ugh. Needs to be very rigid because it looks like it's applying quite a lot of pressure. More screws. All of these screws are very useful, particularly the machine screws. Because if you find one that's like a standard size, like this looks like it might be M3, for example. And that can be used on other stuff. Quick pause on the refocus of the camera. Here we go. Right, this plastic bitch we don't really need, so I'll put that down there for now. There's plastic here, but I can pull it off. I mean, I can twist this probably and get it off. Yeah. Unless I can't. This is, ooh. Ah, that's, very, that's a very rigid bit of metal, that. Uh, just about bend it. Uh, yeah. Very stiff. This is what it looks like. What are those doing? Oh, set screws in there. They must be setting the distance of this. So this is go in and it's, because it's stamped out, it's stamped metal, you can't get very, very tight tolerances. You get it pretty accurate, but you can't get it precise. So this will allow you to, it's like an adjustable shim. If you turn this out, it will push down on this slightly more, so you can, you can level it like that. Oh, here we go, oh, yep. So that's the main carriage bit, and that's a very thick base plate. It's aluminium, I'm guessing. I don't know what KPR means. No idea. Yeah, very thick aluminium. That'd be handy for a heatsink. Presumably aluminium because it's lightweight, but it's, that's really rigid. I can barely bend that. I don't want to bend that because it's a good flat piece I can use for other stuff. So I'll go to one side. Last bit is a roller mechanism. There's a nice big roller in there, nice big rubber roller, nice big thick bearing. That's a very thick bearing, so there's lots of pressure on that as well. There's another. Ooh, ooh, that's interesting. This looks like the feed roller because you can probably hear that. I'll do it to the, close to the microphone. There's a rough section. It's like, a, like a, it's like a fine knurling on the shaft, both here and here. So that's pulling the paper through, like that. And actually you can see the mechanism moving while doing this. Very nice. Let me pull it down, you can see it a bit better. So that'll engage with these motors to pull everything through. And then this, I don't know what this does though, this is, this is the main drive one. I'm still not sure what this does. That's fascinating. I'm gonna think, yeah, this one goes to here, which is, I don't know. It doesn't go round all the way, because if you have a look, there's, see I'll get this in the shot. There's teeth here. But they stop here, and actually, yeah, look, I can turn it that way, and it stops, and that way, and it stops again. It looks like that's lifting something up and down, possibly as part of the feed mechanism for the paper, so this will lift up, draw paper through, then it will push down like that and clamp it in place, and then pull it through to print it, and then the next page it will lift up again to pull another bit of paper through, I'm guessing. And that won't need a lot of torque because it's going for this gearing reduction. And the main torque is the drive to push it through the mechanism, which is what all this is for. I mean, look, there's a lot of gears here. And if I turn this gear here, let me look at this gear. Mm. That's turning a lot quicker than the one I'm moving with my thumb. And all this is moving here. That's really nice. Okay. 
Not sure how much of this I can pull apart, but we'll have a go. There are some screws, but they're buried right down in there. And there's another one. Oh, that one's come out. There was one in here as well. Right, let's see if we can get these rollers out at least. I don't recommend if you're watching this, you take stuff apart by trying to bend it like this because you can slip and have a bit of jagged metal stuck into your hand and that's just not fun, you know. No, I've been there and it's not great. It can put a real damper on the day. You don't want to sit there and bleed out through a gash in your hand when you're trying to take something apart. So be safe, you know. I'll, I'll show you this stuff. Purely as educational source. This isn't a how to take something apart, this is how I take something apart. I'm not, ex not exactly leading by example here. Anyway, let's try and get this off because then this roller might pop out. Looks like I'm gonna have to break something. Oh no, here we go. As long as it's not me, I'll break. Oh, there's one, look at that. That's a big chunky roller, that's good. So that in combination with, where did that go? Here we go, this. That could be interesting for something. I don't know what yet, maybe a very, very small tortilla press. I'm like, tiny tortillas. You can make tortillas for hamsters or something. Beautiful. That's in the keep pile. Right. I don't think we need these bits. It's more tape. Tape can go here. Springs, they're always handy. This is quite a light spring. I think this is part of the clutch mechanism. That can go there. That can go down there. Right. One more roller and some cogs and maybe some more springs. Let's try this, because at least I've got a bit more control if I use the pliers. Ah, we go, look. Uh, uh. Something sprung off and hit the wall. Never to be seen again. I'm sure I'll get it with the vacuum cleaner. Oh, hey, that was a bit better. More ABS. Possible. Don't really know. It's quite springy, I think it's ABS. Well, if there's anyone in the UK that's watching this that wants some ABS, leave me a comment and I can maybe ship the case and other bits to you. You know, if you want, if you've got a a Phyllis Druder or a filament bot or whatever it's called for three D printing, free plastic. It's yours if you want it. Just let me know because I don't think I'll be using it. I don't have a three D printer, let alone a filament extruder. Here we go. Right. Oh, we're nearly there, okay. Brute force. Oh, no, this is part of this. I'm going to have to get this cog wheel off of here and get the roller off that way. Hmm. Oh, it's a circlip, okay. I think if I could take that off, I can slide the rod through this way. Circle is down in, where is it? Down in there, it's another one of those. Just about to see it rotate there. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this off. I don't think I can use the pliers this time because it's nestled quite tight in there. Maybe this, maybe I can use this. Oh yeah, I can, look at that. Yes, it's very thin metal, these circlips, and they need to be because they've got to flex in a direction which kind of opposes their design. Now, normally these things, they want to flex along the axis where it's thinner, like that. But 
these by design. They need to fucking pick the thing up. They need to be able to flex outwards like this to go around something. So they're springy that way. So it's quite a lot, a lot more material. So to make it, make it by making it thinner, it makes it a bit easier. Now this should hopefully. Oh, here we go. Things are happening. Right, that comes off of there. All that prying and that just fell off of that. Brilliant. Now this is tricky because. Remember this rod has rough bits on it to pull the paper through. And now it's sticking. Can I get the cog wheel off of here? Probably not. Not easily. Right, let's carry on. And this is going for a plastic bearing, so it just should just cut a path through. There we go. Perfect. And now you can see a bit better the rough bits on here because I've picked up all the plastic from that bearing surface. There we go, let's get rid of that. Another circlip on here. Ah, see, we're getting there, aren't we? We're now getting a, a better idea of what is holding on, what onto what. These feel like plastic, I'm not sure, but I think they are. I think they are, yeah, like just a tough plastic. Possibly more ABS. I don't know. Oh, look, I've got to pull this off of here now. Oh, uh, look, after all that, Jesus Christ. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So that's a handy feeder rod for something, maybe this. I don't know. I've got some cogwheels down here. Let's get this mechanism off. Let's use the right tool. I'm not doing very well at framing my shots, am I? Dear me. Uh, more cogwheels. Oh, uh huh. Don't think about use that. Put that down there. Let's get rid of all this little lot. There we go. But cog wheels are quite handy. If you keep the sets together, then you know what meshes up with what. And it's a bit trickier to work with because it's nylon and nylon tends not to want to stick to anything. Oh, wow. Look at that. That was pushing that. Down onto this. I'm guessing it's a, a slip ring, like a clutch. Yeah, here we go. So, okay, this, hang on. Yeah, here we go. So we've got this here has a, it's got a, a D hole in it, it's called. Hopefully that's showing up quite well. So that can rotate and engage with a cog, with a, a rod rather, that's got a flat cut into it and it then makes that turn there's another one on this and there's this cog which has this felt pad pressed on by this spring so by turning that cog it pushes on the felt pad which turns this which turns that rod so it's like the clutch in your car if you have a car You've got friction acting on these two surfaces, and it causes that to rotate like that. So if something binds up, that can carry on turning, and it doesn't jam anything up. So that's interesting. Possibly. If it gets to the end of the paper and it tries to pull something through and it's not there, it might jam this up. So they've added this little clutch so it doesn't stop the motor from jamming. And then there's other parts, like the page out detector, like these infrared detectors on this, on here, that tell the machine, that tell the circuit board inside it if the paper's run out so it can then stop turning the motor. So that's a clever idea, it stops wear on the motor. There's actually two clutches. So it's like a double action thing. Last little bits. 
Uh, this should clip apart, I think. I'm not sure. I think these pop off of here. I still want to know what this does. I'm thinking it is part of this, the feed roller. I can probably see it a bit better now. If I do that. You can see the teeth aren't all the way around the cog. And then it stops. There's definitely an end stop there. Fascinating. Oh, actually. If I can get this off of here. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, here we go. That is there's like clips built into the cogs themselves somewhere, possibly this one. But have a look at the back of that. Here we go. So it just turns. Look, up, oof, I'm all over the place. There's like a cam on the back. And that's pushing something up and down. Like that. Here you go, look, it's gone down at this one. Up and up again and down. It's got grease all over it, so there is something that slides over this because there's no, there's no grease on the teeth on any on any, on any of these gears. I think nylon on nylon, unless it's like very high speed or high stress, you don't really need gear. You don't need grease on them. But when you've got sliding surfaces like this, you do. I think I don't know. I don't know that much about grease and its properties and everything else. You get so many different types of grease. Right, this is going to come out of here anytime soon. Uh, ah, yes. I think this is right. Right, got a little. See that little bit there? That is a built in clip molded into the plastic, so no need for a fastener. You just mould it a little bit like that, and if I get this, pull this up, like this. Here we go. Now that will slide up and down. And if I pull these rods out of here, the whole thing will lift off. So again, you've got a very easy way of Moulding a clip into a surface, and look here again, into the plastic rather, and there's a clip down in there. No need of extra screws, you just mould the plastic to how you want and it clips in place. Because the plastic is flexible, so you, you'll bend into place to a degree. And that's a whole mechanism, I mean look. It's an incredible amount of engineering, just going into that, isn't it? There's the other clip here I couldn't get to, because that's behind all of this. So that would slot into place like this, and then these bits will go click, and then these little tiny little pegs here engage in holes in the metal, holding it all together. And that's all you need for that. No need for fasteners or screws or glue of any sort, no nuts and bolts. Just mould the plastic to how you want to make it all clip in place. I think with that, we are done. Oh. So let's have a look what, what we've got and we can use. Right, I'm interrupting myself here for a minute because I forgot about this. The roller cartridge thingy, which I thought was a laminator. So the ink that's in the paper goes on, comes out of the paper, this goes over, over, over the top of it. But it's not. There's actually, well, it's a three color printing process. I've got cyan, magenta, and yellow. And if, I don't know how we're about to see this. Um, more a white surface. My kingdom from white surface. I mean, have a look at this. You can just about make out images on this. Let's see if I get a clear one. Because I've got miles and miles of this and it's just like that and as I pull it off I've got yellow cyan magenta then white I think the white is he no the white doesn't do anything I don't think there's nothing printed on the white 
Oh, I think these ones are blank. So this is the feed roller. And it goes onto the other roller as it's used. It looks like a heat transfer method. So as it heats up, it takes the ink that's on these and puts it onto the paper. I don't know if I can... Oh, there's a little bit of something on the other side. No. Let's see if I can do this and then burnish it to make it hot. If I go over the same areas. No. Oh yeah. Okay, so cyan. If I try the blue. little bit of blue you can just about see it's very I think I'm getting the right side I don't know why they put ink on both sides let's try no nothing there but if I do this yeah they're definitely So I'll get a close up of that and put it in the video. But there's ink on these rollers. There's nothing on anything until I get to. Where are we? Here we go. I've never seen this before. This is so bizarre. I mean, it's something. I've got to be careful, of course, and think nothing can. Um, sensitive on here this looks like someone's kitchen i'm holding it up to the light and having a look and if i put it flat oh yeah can you see so we've got here's the worktop and we've got a cooker hood and there's the the hood part of the hood there. There's a picture frame there with some ink in it. So it's actually the ink is in this. Okay, yeah, so that's the blue part of that picture. That's a cyan. That's the yellow. And then the clear, I don't think the clear is doing anything. I don't know if it's just a spacer or a something to clean the feed mechanism or the uh, the trans the heater transfer or what but it's well this one is another room can't really see that very well I'll put some pictures in set and I'll put these up against the window oh well, that's all of them hang on this there's, there's one I want to get some scissors. Be right back. I'm back. This is fascinating. Talk about a rabbit hole. I never expected this. I mean, the entertainment I've got from this for three quid. That's unparalleled, isn't it? Right, there's nothing on. There's actually quite a few images, so I won't go too far into, into that. I'll pull out a few. Up to where it stops. I forget where that was. Right, I want to cut while I find the end of this. Okay, that was officially fascinating. I've got all of this. There is hundreds upon hundreds worth of pages of photos here. It's, it's all sheets of ink. I'll tell you what it's like. It's like the old typewriters that had the reel of ink on a ribbon. And you could look at the, ring, the, um, the ink. And where there wasn't ink was like white characters printed into it. So you could read it and work out what was being typed onto the typewriter. And the rest of the cartridge was just more ABS. 
I can go an ABS pole and some steel, one steel rod for um, tensioning, it's the outfeed roller, and the rollers themselves. So that's even more ABS. I believe it's ABS, I mean, it's very rigid. It's got the same sort of finish as the other bits, which are marked as ABS. Right, now I'm going to get back to showing you what I, what I was originally going to show you, and that's the bits from this. So let's get this all together again. Huh. So the typical parts from a uh, digital camera portable printer thing. You get a whole load of ABS you can use if you've got a filament extruder and you've got a means of blending this down, crushing it up. You've got lots of little screws, there's springs. There's little this little thing, I forgot about this, on the top panel we've got a switch in the centre there. Actually, let's get this in frame, shall we? Switch in the centre. And three, four, in fact, LEDs. So that's good. We have cogs here. We've got lots of steel rods, engineered steel rods, so they'll be very, very, very precisely ground. Two stepping motors. We've got an optical switch. There was two optical switches, but I broke one of them. And two other little switches. We've got the main board that's got things like capacitors on them, and they're quite they're quite valuable. You need those in circuits. You've got a choke there, suppression choke, a USB socket. You've got a DC inlet jack. Got another suppression choke there. A big piece of aluminium you can use for a heatsink. Got another steel rod here. What about? And this insanity. How much? Inf how much? Entertainment you want for your three quid? I mean, blimey! So that was the teardown. Let's put this away somewhere, shall we? Well, that was my first teardown. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been an hour long. <laughs> If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up or give it a little thumbs up. It's pretty much the same thing. Leave a comment down below if you want to see more teardowns. Let me know what you want, what you want to see t torn down. Can't get my words out. Um, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next week.